Keep the word. I don't care. In the beat goes on, yeah, glitter, glisten, gloss, floss, I get your beat running like Randy Moss. Hi, Judds, L.A., back in the saddle again. New Year's, 2014, New Year's resolution, stop drinking beer. Broke that resolution already. On to the next thing. Oh, spent the last two weeks... Back home in Massachusetts, living like a 37-year-old degenerate for two weeks. I love it. I go home. I still stay in the same room. I go upstairs. I watch porn on my tablet. I go downstairs. I eat all types of desserts, peppermint stick ice cream at every meal, drink 30 beers a day, stuck in the freaking cold weather, go to the 99s. Gain 10 pounds, make my teeth two more shades of yellow by drinking Dunkin' Donuts twice a day. Dunkin' Donuts supposedly coming out here to the West Coast in the next year or two, so there will be absolutely no reason to live back in New England once Dunkin' Donuts is out here. Got my father a tablet, my 74-year-old father a Samsung tablet, knows nothing about computers. That is a Least fun I had the whole time trying to teach him how to read and point. Google is the internet. He had no clue on any of it. I'm trying to tell him my, my, my buddy's two and a half year old kid can figure out how to use a tablet. 74 year old man, no clue. Brutal. I digress. Moving on in the new year. High school game, the Under Armour. We are at the time of year now that everybody is starting to. All the high school kids are starting to come out and declare. What a frail, horrible ESPN with their dirty paw prints all over all that stuff. That Under Armour, um, Under Armour game, they're all wearing neon green. It was a Team Nitro versus Team Highlight. <laughs> wearing neon green, Under Armour. And the best part of those games, the unintentional comedy, I don't even know. Don't, maybe they know. ESPN's not, well, they are stupid, but they bring the kids up in between plays, and they have them announce their team. It's unreal. It looks like a Tyler Perry movie up there every time a kid is going to announce what school. It's a borderline racist statement. I strike that, but it's true. They have kids up there, and they hide their hats, and they say, and every one of them now is, I'm going to take my talents to taking a page out of LeBron. The one thing they can take from LeBron is take my talents to. I thought that one kid... Is it Gerald Willis? His mother, a couple years ago, made YouTube fame when her other son, Landon Collin. Wait, they don't have the same last name. How, do, how does that work? Well, I don't know. Anyways, that was her uh, other son. But this year, her, her son, she's a diehard LSU fan. Evidently, they're from Louisiana. But this, this year, the kid went to Florida. A couple years back, the kid went to Louis, what, LSU. No, excuse me. That's where she wanted to go. A couple years back, the kid went to Alabama, and the mom pulled a, not didn't pull a fit, but just looked at him with disgrace that the kid would go to either one of those schools of LSU. So, so much pull she had. Imagine having those, having people, you know, those college coaches, the worst. They whore themselves out to these 17 year old kids. They have these 17 year old kids and their parents in their house. It's the worst thing. I don't know why anybody would want to be a major college football coach. The prostitution that they perform every night. They text they text kids something like there's one kid who's up there saying he got something like three hundred text messages a night from these recruiters. Imagine that. What kind of life is that? Staying up all night texting high school kids, trying to get them to come to your school. It's terrible. And ESPN just pumps it up. ESPN I didn't realize it. Of course, I realized it, but it didn't really dawn on me the effect that ESPN has on everything. Consider the fact that every freaking bowl game was on ESPN this year. 
feel bad for the, there's got to be but it's at least like 15, 20% of the people out there that don't have cable TV. Good for them, first of all, for not bowing down. But you can't watch any games. I don't think there was any game. I, think, I don't even know if the Rose Bowl was on national TV. Yeah, the bowl season. I enjoy the bowl season. There are people out there that bitch about it. Too many bowl games. I disagree. Of course, when you sit around the parents' house for two weeks and you're doing nothing but looking forward to football games, I think there should be, I think there's just enough amount of bowl games out there. But the bowl games up until New Year's Eve, spending New Year's Eve with Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, save us from 2013. Because all the rest of the bowl games up until that point really weren't watching. There was nothing, there's nothing that really caught my caught my eye before. Johnny Manziel delivered us from evil, delivered us from our sins, and showed us college football. It's good to see him healthy again, first of all, because I don't think he's been healthy in weeks. And when he finally is healthy, he's still the most dynamic best player in the game. That's why a couple of my buddies running their mouth saying, oh, Manziel won't be able to make it in the NFL. He's too small. Oh, the lies, the blasphemy. First of all, when has there been a college quarterback? I defy anybody listening, all six of my listeners, I defy you to sit back and name one college quarterback that was good in college but couldn't make it because he was too short, and that seems to be the knock on Manziel. He's too small. Impossible. There's never been a guy that's just been too short. I can't see over the line. They're too big. Yeah, guess what? They're really big in college, too. They're not, put, they're not rolling out 5'10". 5'11 offensive lineman. All those fools are at least 6'4", 6'3". Okay, the height is not a problem. The speed, yes. But the height is not a problem. Men's, oh, oh he, he can't, oh, are you kidding me? Just an impressive performance once again. Took them from nothing. Took them, they were getting run out of the building versus Duke of all teams. Duke, which is a team I always, I've always thought Duke should be good, like North Carolina. You bring your recruits in. First of all, North Carolina is a hotbed of talent. There's a lot of talent in the state of North Carolina, but you bring them in on recruiting trips and you bring them to Cameron or North Carolina, you bring them to North Carolina, those games. I mean, those kids are going to get excited about watching those games, right? And they bring the energy of the school. I think Duke is one of those, you know, diamonds in the rough, if you will. David Cutliffe doing a good job. Johnny Menzel, just that much better. I think he's declared. I don't know if it's been a, it's official, officially he's declared. I hope he ends up with the Raiders, though. Kidding me? How, that's a match made in heaven. Johnny Football and the Raiders? Be perfect. Make the, make the franchise relevant again. Moving on in the bowl games. Let's talk about the granddaddy of them all, because that was really, that was, a, that was the next best game I saw. Actually, probably was the best game overall. Michigan State. Taking a Michigan State, Mark D'Antonio. I never would have thought this. Brilliant. Brilliant tactician. I'll tell you why. Goes out and finds the number one. Well, I don't know number one, but he goes out and finds a relevant hip hop artist, Rich Homie Quan, which is a great name. Don't know anything about him. I'm a hip hop fan, but I don't know anything about Rich Homie Quan other than the name is awesome. Brings him on the sideline. I think he's from Atlanta or something. Nothing. Probably never been to Michigan. Maybe toured there. And now Rich Homie Quan. Every Michigan State's cool. They got great unis, by the way. What a brilliant piece of recruiting. Recruiting tool. Bring the bring a, a relevant hip hop artist. Make them yours. Bring them on the sideline. And there you go. Instant street cred. Mark D'Antonio. Great win. Brett Musburger, unfortunately, did the game because, well, you know, the granddaddy of them all. That's him. He is the granddaddy of all the announcers, I guess. But just the whole time, the underdogs are howling. First of all, I don't understand how a team that's number four could be the underdog versus a team that's number five. I could see with point spreads, but I can't see how it's really that significant of an underdog. You're talking four and five. Four couldn't be that much of an underdog, but they were. And Stanford had two losses to two unranked teams. They lost to Arizona. They lost to USC. So I you know, don't think it was that big of an upset. And Michigan State had the number one defense in the country. But Brent Musburger being what he does, the underdogs were howling. Great win for Michigan State. And I think Michigan State with stability and Mark D'Antoni, you know, he's got, he's got a legitimate system, which is what I like about David Shaw and Stanford as well. 
They have legitimate philosophies, and you can see them being run out there. Michigan State, I think, is going to be there for a while because Michigan ain't doing it. Brady Hoke ain't doing it. They lost their bowl game. Oh, speaking of the bowl game, ESPN and their dominance. How can they just? How can they shoot Mark May and Lou Holtz at us every single chance that they get? Does ESPN not do any market research? Nobody likes listening to Lou Holtz and Mark May. Lou, Lou Holtz is older than Methuselah. He's got to be. He's got to be in his hundreds. He's older than Mike Dicker, for Christ's sake. Which my buddy was convinced that Mike Dicker was eighty-four years old. Of course, in this day and age, it's great because. Those people that just would bullshit and be like, you know how my buddy's like, you know how old Mike Dick is? No, how old? He's 84. Oh, fuck you. I'm going to pull my phone out right now and completely shoot you down. He's like 73. But it's amazing, you know, the the, the barroom bullshitter is <laughs> ruse the day they came up with the iPhone because you can pull that shit up and call bullshit on within a matter of 20 seconds. But why do they stick Lou Holtz and Mach May on every single broadcast? Speaking of broadcasts as ESPN family, Chris Fowler evidently was saved at the halftime of the game. I didn't know this, that Jesse Palmer performed the Heimlich maneuver on Chris Fowler during one of the pro, uh, bowl games. That's something. You should be lauded as a hero. I think I'd pay about 50 bucks to see Mark Main try to do the Heimlich maneuver to Lou Holtz. They should see him his stuff me. <laughs> he would probably crack crap his rigs. A big cloud of dust would come out of Lou Holtz if he tried to give him a high lick maneuver. Lou Holtz looked like he was ancient in like 1985, 86 when he was the head coach of Notre Dame. He looked like he was in his 60s. Look, he's got to be 95 years old. And you can't understand a word he says. And then in some of these halftime shows when he's on the field, the band's playing behind him. And he's just coming over the microphone. Yeah, CSPN just consistently throws at guys that nobody can nobody can bear, but they keep throwing them out there. Moving on, what do we got? Fiesta, Baylor, forty-two, Central Florida, fifty-two. I tell you what, with with a team like couple things there. One, I lost my card. My buddy, whose old man goes to the VFW every single day. Gives me a football card. Got drunk, picked it. That was the only game I lost on. I thought Baylor was gonna t- take him out. And I also can't stand George O'Leary, and I'll tell you why. First of all, George O'Leary looks like he's a freaking drunken ring in. He looked like he belonged in that VFW, which would be a reason I like him. But I'll tell you what, I think George O'Leary got off way too easy with this whole Notre Dame thing. All right, I know that was years ago, and I believe in second chances as much as the next guy. But when you, when you live that business, and it's a little bit of sour grape, sour grape alert, no doubt about it. Okay, but when you live that business and you coach in that business like I did for a number of years, and I still have friends who do it, and I do it myself at the high school level, you can't lie about who you are. You can't say you were a player when you weren't a player. You can't say you got your master's degree at a fucking school that doesn't even exist. He said he got his, his master's degree from NYU Stony Brook. There is no NYU Stony Brook. It's SUNY Stony Brook. And he explained this away by saying, oh, it was just a, an error by an SID at a school I worked at, at and I never corrected it. Bullshit. You fucking know what's on your resume. Everybody knows what's on their resume. You know that you didn't play at UNH, that you were bench warmer if you played at all. Okay? I mean, look, I was no stud, but at least I, the school I went to, I played at it. Got a little bit of run. Again, average player, but at least I fucking did it. Okay? And then you coach at the schools you say, you play, you play the schools you play, you got your freaking master's degree. Fuck George O'Leary. Should never got another chance. It's like a, well, it's not like a doctor, but it is. It's like if you're in another profession and you lose out because somebody lost out the job to George O'Leary for Central Florida, somebody didn't get it. Okay, but O'Leary, who's lied about his resume, you say, oh, but he's proven it as a coach. Fuck that. Coach the coach. You go out and recruit a couple players, and all of a sudden now you're a great coach. And I'm not saying he doesn't know football, but. Whatever, you know, I can't stand O'Leary for the fact, but I should have known better. Central Florida is like the second biggest school in the nation. All right. You got a public school from Florida versus a private Christian Presbyterian school in Texas. I'll take the uh, public school from Florida any day of the week. It's the second biggest school in the country. Okay. Now, granted, Central Florida doesn't didn't have football for that long, but it doesn't matter. And go out and get players, and they did automatically. 
Blake Bortles is a player. He's no doubt about that. I'll give respect to Blake Bortles. He's a good quarterback. He hasn't come out yet not that I think of. They had O'Leary on the pre pregame. He's like, oh, Blake's girlfriend's worth six million Googles. You fucking red nosed pervert, fucking. <laughs> Forget George O'Leary and his six million Googles. Something my dad would say. Oh, he's worth six million Googles. Nevertheless, our Browse will be staying at Baylor. Pull his name, supposedly pull his name out of the Texas job search. Texas just went ahead and hired Charlie Strong. Great pickup, I think. Or at least a solid one, nonetheless. Although I don't know how he's going to play out in Texas. The racism still exists. Who are we fooling people? The racism still exists. There was an article the other day written about why Charlie Strong isn't a hip hop coach. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you gonna just call this guy a hip hop coach, which is slain for friggin' black man. He's not a hip hop coach. I don't know how they can just go ahead and say something like that and get away with it in Texas. But I think Charlie Strong will be all right. I think he's a good recruit. I think Mac Brown did a good job, just missed on quarterbacks. Missed on Robert Griffin. Missed on a couple other guys. There was one guy, I think David Ash, supposed to be something, didn't pan out. Shit, Texas was still 8-5. and five. It wasn't like they were the sisters of the poor this year. And they just didn't work out. Mac Brown out, Charlie Strong in. Although Charlie Strong misses out on his number one recruiter, a guy named Clint Hurt. Well, I don't know if you know anything about Clint Hurt, but he was a guy who was at the center of that uh, Miami. It was Miami shenanigans a few years back. is why Miami went on probation. This guy has gotten all types of sanctions on, but for some reason he's kind of come out of it. He's staying at Louisville. I don't know who Louisville is going to bring in as a coach. I think Louisville will fade back into oblivion. Louisville went out and got Teddy Bridgewater, which obviously made their fortunes. Teddy Bridgewater tore it up against Miami too. Teddy Bridgewater is from Miami. Absolutely strafed him. Strafed Miami. Al Golden staying at Miami. Obviously, evidently he pulled his name out of the... Penn State, Penn State's a mess. Penn State's a mess. I don't know if you watched the or heard about the read the article about Bill O'Brien. Obviously, Bill O'Brien's gone. We're going to talk about that pro game in a minute. But Billy O'Brien had a borderline meltdown to a reporter talking about the situation and the sanctions and the, the quote-unquote paternal people. Sounds like a bad 60s horror movie. The paternal people. Who's still there. And the influence is there. It's going to be there for a while. I think O'Brien did a nice job of transitioning. Okay. And kept him afloat. Went out and recruited. Went out and got some people. Because evidently he's just quarterback guru. Because he had Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady, the guy who already won three Super Bowls. And an MVP before Billy Boy got there. I don't understand how a defensive end from Brown. Can all of a sudden become this quarterback guru. But. I digress. I got no ill will towards Bill O'Brien. He's actually from the town next to where I grew up. He's from Andover, Massachusetts. I think he'll do well with Houston Texans. But Penn State seems like this job that not a lot of people are too interested in right now. Shiano was a name that first came up. They'd be fools to hire Shiano. Anybody be fool to hire Shiano. Forget him. Mike Munchak, you really want to bring in a pro retread who's never coached in college before, even though he went there. I don't think that's the answer either. I think the answer is in-house. I think they make Larry Johnson, Larry Johnson Sr., the D-line coach. Keep him. Make him the ne next head coach at Penn State. Of course, they could also make James Franklin from Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt with a big win over Houston. They were up 24 nothing. ended up tying it. Houston ended up tying it. Vanderbilt, that's the hot name in coaching right now. It seems to be James Franklin. I hope he's just not the Rooney Rule quota for the, some of these NFL teams. What a ridiculous rule, by the way, the Rooney rule. You got to you gotta interview a black man for this job. <laughs> Come on. He's gonna, you have to interview a black man. So they just go out and, and go through the motions to interview a black guy. There are plenty of qualified blank, black quarter, uh, coaches out there that don't need that Rooney rule to be thrown in there. The NFL and the Gestapo-like ways. Ugh, Gadal. There's Gestapo-like ways. I'm not done talking about college. I don't want. I don't want to get. I don't want to get my feathers all ruffled over Ergadal yet. Still got a lot of college to talk about. Bama dropping one to Oklahoma. Bobby Stoops shut the naysayers up because a lot of people have been bashing Bobby Stoops. And I think I did as well in this program, if I can remember. Because Oklahoma's kind of been out of it the last few years. Come on, hand a towel. Well, 
shouldn't say handed out. They beat Alabama by two touchdowns. Really could have been one. So sick of hearing about A.J. McCarron as the game manager. The game manager. Just That's just like saying, oh, he's, you know, he's a fail. He's a little bit better than an average quarterback. I love when they say, he's a game manager. Just don't throw interceptions. Don't make bad decisions. Because if you weren't a game manager, you could go out and throw interceptions and make bad decisions. No. Basically, you're saying he's not a superstar. And superstars can get away with some things. But guys like A.J. McCarron camp. So they call him a game manager. And A.J. couldn't quite manage that game. Nicky Saban, too, you know, is the defensive guru. He's giving up 45, really 38. Huge win for Oklahoma. And I hate that they say, oh, we weren't ready. We, we took them lightly. That's just bullshit. That's human nature. People like to be able to pigeonhole this little reason why Alabama lost. You don't go on the football field, especially guys like that. They don't go on a football field and be like, I'm not motivated. You know, they're not freaking actors and not Christian Bale. What's my motivation? Your motivation is you're playing a freaking football game. You're going to get your teeth knocked in if you don't play it well. If you don't, if you don't go after and go 100%, you're going to get killed. So it's like saying, you know, any kids on bad high school teams go out there, I'm not motivated to play. Fuck that. When the lights are on and you're on the field, if you're not motivated to play, you're playing the wrong sport, period. People just love to pigeon, they love to say that, oh, that's the reason why Alabama lost. No, they got outplayed. Hats off to Oklahoma. Of course, going viral all over the world was that Alabama mom and went with the flying Tito Santana forearm smash jumping over all those Oklahoma fans. Those are Oklahoma, <laughs> you know, Oklahoma fans calling out Alabama fans for sleeping with their cousins. We are talking about Oklahoma here, right? Oklahoma and Alabama. They should have had teeth contest in the stands where <laughs> fans had more teeth. Oklahoma fans are out. Oh, AFC, AFC. Can't lay claim to a whole conference, Alabama fans. But the mom went flying over the top. Mom was right. Yeah, they were messing with my 16-year-old son. Okay. Why are these people even in this situation? They're not a freaking game. All right? It's a college football game. It's a football game for Christ's sake. How do you, you even get in those situations is beyond me. I don't know. But people talking about how much too much, too many bowl games. I don't fans love it. Gives the fans a destination. Gives those people something to do. Go out and watch those games. What other games do I want to talk about? Nebraska. Bo Pelini in the Big Ten. He's getting all types of shit for not being on Michigan State with the big win. Nebraska with a good win over UGA. UGA just fell apart this year. I thought they were a national championship contender, but Bo Pelini, who I talked about at length on this show, looks like a freaking cartoon character, doesn't he? So there's a Twitter account, Fo Pelini. Guys, more followers than Bo Pelini. And Nebraska, and they pulled it out. Hey, good for Nebraska. Advocate V100 Bowl. And reason I'm bringing it up, BC smashed. BC plays well in balls. I tell you, Richie Rodriguez got Arizona playing well. Arizona is a team that is going to be – Pac-12 seems to me I, – I'll say, I think Pac-12, and I have fought it for years. I've lived out here for a number of years now, and I always talked about the Pac-12 not being able to play defense. I think the Pac-12 has overtaken the SEC. I've said it. This year is a transition year. I think Pac-12 has got – from top to bottom is a better conference than the big t- uh, than SEC. SEC over Big Ten, LSU 21, Iowa 14. Seems like getting back to the Under Armour Bowl, seems like every kid has the same list of schools that he goes to every time. Schools, Louisiana, Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, once in a while, Arizona, be thrown in there. See any USC's? And I, nobody was talking USC. I don't know why. I don't see any UCLA's. I don't get that either. Speaking of UCLA, put it on Virginia Tech. Big surprise, though. What's his name? Logan Thomas went out early. Virginia Tech pretenders every year, even though you look at them all the time. And it seems like every year they say, Virginia Tech, top three defense in the nation. Great quarterback. Beamer ball. And every year Virginia Tech seems to freaking go seven and four, eight and four, fall flat in their face. I don't get it. I think Beamer got to go. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm for stability. I'm just running my mouth. What do I know? UCLA put it on him. UCLA got great news today. 
Brent Hunley staying in for his senior year. I believe his senior year. Yeah, definitely senior year. I don't think he's a registered, registered junior, but yeah, which I think is foolish because I think Brent Hunley could go out and be a top 15 pick and make millions and millions of dollars. But hey, kid wants to stay in school. Who am I to say otherwise? Well, it could be worse places than being in Westwood for another year. But there's just too much. There's too much There's too much risk involved there. I don't know why a kid would want to stay if he didn't have to, but, you know, who knows? That's what he's got going on. Speaking of SC, Royal Purple Vegas Bowl, which is my second favorite name next to the Beef O'Brady Bowl. Beef O'Brady. I thought, I thought I was a fairly cultured person, but I guess not. I had no idea what Beef O'Brady's was. I had to look that shit up. Evidently, Beef O'Brady's some type of... Uh, Chili's type restaurant in the South. No clue. Thought I was Philly culture. I spent some time in the South. No idea what Beef O'Brady was. Where was I? Royal Purple Vegas Bowl. SC smothering Fresno. 45-20. Wasn't even that close. That was a that was a bowl that kicked off the bowl season, really, so to speak. Eddie O, Eddie Orgeron and his infinite wisdom. Friggin'. And then try Sarkeesian is trying to bring back Ed Orgeron. But Ed Orgeron gotta realize, you know what, Ed? You had a good thing going. You had no fucking, no bearing on why SC turned it around after Lane left. Two things. One, I think Lane's kind of a freaking stiff shirt. Two, I think Lane Kiffin had a little bit of bad luck. And three, I think Eddie Orgeron had great luck. You were not the reason, Eddie Orgeron, why USC turned it around. You left the offensive coordinator, the guy who calls plays. You're not calling plays. Guy who calls plays. They put up 45-20 and it's a pretty good Fresno State team. SC will be back. As much as I really don't want to say that, I'm not really an SC fan. I think SC fans are obnoxious, but I just came back from Massachusetts listening to all the talk about the Patriots, and as a Patriot fan, to sit here and call another fan base obnoxious is uh, quite hip-o-critical. What else? Nothing really I want to talk about. Buffalo Wild Wind Bowl, I really want to spend time on that. I don't think so. Holiday Bowl, Arizona, a little bit of an upset. Texas Tech blowing out Arizona State. Cliff Kingsbury, that's another guy. He's he's got that snake oil salesman look to him, doesn't he? He got that Ryan, that Ryan Goslin. That that's he's got that math teacher substitute look that he's probably giving it to the captain of the girls' softball team, the girls' field hockey team. Cliff Kingsbury's got that too cool for school look. I think he's gonna be one of these guys that's gonna end up in the NFL or one of these high profile jobs. Never know. Penn State, maybe? No, I don't know. I don't know. I already said my piece on Penn State. Enough of that. All right, what do I want to get out of this college freaking scene? Clowney committed to going to the NFL. Should have did it last year, really. I don't know why people, I saw Lee Corso running, running his mouth saying, oh, if, if Clowney didn't play in the NCAA this year, I wouldn't take him. You don't want to compete. Screw that. You're going to make your money. What the hell? Because if Clowney didn't play this year, he still would have been taken in the top three, four, five and made his money, stayed healthy. You know, the problem with football coaching is football coaches. Fuck that. The kid was ready to play. The guy was ready to play in the NFL when he was a freshman. Why are you going to keep them out? Ergodonis, Gestapo-like tactics. The funny thing reading about Clowney, he only had three sacks this year. Now, I always thought, personally, I always think sack is kind of an overrated statistic. I really do. But you think he would have came up with more than three? You think there would have been one offensive tackle that just couldn't handle him? He would have could have got two or three in a game. You know what I mean? Because he played. You know he had battling injuries, and there are guys out there that convinced he should be the number one pick overall. I have my reservations about him being number one pick overall, top five, no doubt. But I don't know. Jadavion Clowney. It's like a DNs or outside linebackers, pass rushers. I like that guy Murphy from Stanford. I think that guy gets after it. You know, I don't know if you take him over Clowney. I can see Clowney being one of these guys that is in a bad situation on his rookie contract, middling results, you know, and then gets a st- ends up maybe having one good year, two good years, battles injuries, gets a payday, goes from there, and the second team he ends up tearing it up. I don't know. Let's get out of it. Let's get out of the freaking. There's got to be one more game. Whatever. If I think of it, I'll get back to it. Pro game, wild card weekend. Unfortunately, I was flying last night. I was watching the beginning. I was watching Kansas City. I watched Kansas City, Indianapolis, 
in the airport. And I guess it really comes down to, you know, I think that these games that I really don't care if, what team I want to win. But I was kind of looking for, I kind of wanted Kansas City to win. Because I'm kind of sad. Even though I say in the praises of Jim Irsay and his program, I'm kind of sick of them. And it's something about Andy Luck. And now that the now Indianapolis is playing the Patriots next week, next week I am full up against Andy Luck. But he looks like the freaking caveman from a Geico commercial with his freaking beard. And ever listen? You ever listen to that fool talk? He sounds like he's you know mush mouth. Although I'm sure he's way smarter than I am, but that's not that difficult. But. I don't know. I just want. I, just, I wanted Indy to lose, and I felt that you know they were down twenty four. I kind of felt that they could come back, especially at home, especially the fact Kansas City was one in five, one in five this year versus winning teams. I right, talk about scheduling. Scheduling and circumstance means so much. Boy, Andy Reid. I, I haven't been following Andy Reid's career as closely as some of my associates. Props to Matt Student, but they talk about his clock management skills being so subpar, and talk about his his time management skills. And I, evidently, I didn't watch. I was flying that he blew another one. I guess they had a two minute warning, and he took a timeout right after a two minute warning, which really draws me offside. You got thirty freaking coaches working for you. You think you could get one nerd, one nerd on your staff that would tell you exactly when to take timeouts and how to manage the clock and just have him stand next to you and you say you know what you do nothing except tell me when to take timeouts and how to manage a clock and when to go for two and stuff like that nothing else that's all you do okay don't tell me NFL coaches in the and these teams don't have the resources to be able to do that but evidently Kansas City blew something again and Indianapolis ended up winning and then the you know of course Jimmy Ursay coming out and what's the guy's name the GM from uh with Gregson from Indianapolis Colts come out and compare Andy Luck to Michael Jordan after one after one playoff win against a team that's one in five against winning teams. Going to compare him to arguably one of the greatest athletes. Well, no arguing about it. One of the greatest athletes of all time. Andy Luck is now Michael Jordan. Chucky Pagano claims that now Andy Luck is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. See how that plays out in New England next week, my friends. Oh, I hope it's freezing. I hope it's as cold out as it was the other day. I don't know. I don't know, though. He scares me. Any luck scares me. I don't know if the Pats back end can hold up to it. We shall see. That's why they play the games. And Philadelphia, the Philadelphia game, Philadelphia-New Orleans game, I got nothing. All I know is New Orleans won. And I was kind of hoping for Philly to pull it out. Over the course of this year, I've, you know, I've gone up and down with Chip Kelly, even though we almost got into a fist fight. I kind of wanted Philly to win that game. I'm sick of Drew Brees. Drew Brees and Sean Payton. Let me, everybody blow Sean Payton, how good they are. And that, but yeah, the, nice, the nice ESPN Rick Riley type <laughs> friggin' come story about how Drew Brees and Nick Foles went to the same high school. That was great. I don't know how many different times I saw that in the course of a few days. Hopefully New Orleans gets bounced in the next round. Today's game, so Cincinnati, ah, the Red Rocket. You know, Andy Dalton, he's just good enough to lose, huh? I mean, he's only been in the year, what? Only been in the league two, the two, three years? I don't even know. So much hate. How much hate does, a, does Andy Dalton get as a redhead? People love to freaking bash redheads. All right? You know, as a fellow redhead ginger, I didn't even know what that meant until South Park. I didn't even know what the phrase ginger meant. Just a goofy redhead before that. But, you know, it could, people could shit on redheads all they want. But if you say anything about the gays, you're a freaking homophobe. What about a red phobe? You're a freaking ginger phobe. Uh, where's, our, where's our contingency? How come we can't get people? Oh, no, we're just fair game. Just throw all your shit out at us. Just talk shit on us all you want. But heaven forbid you make, you make a comment about the gays. Man, speaking of the gays, they say in Aaron Rodgers this week how much he loved women. I wish he was gay. I wish Aaron Rodgers were gay. That way, you know, then nobody would say, boo, oh, he's still great. Oh. Speaking of which, Chris Cluey, the punter extraordinaire, came out this week and wrote this big article about how he was ostracized from Minnesota because 
he took such a pro-gay marriage stance. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't you know. Okay, yeah, fine. He was saying that the special teams coach name escapes me was saying some outrageous shit about the gays. Oh my goodness, Chris. Really? Are you are you implying that there are homophobes in the NFL? Are you implying that some football coaches don't like gays? Oh my goodness. It's like the same thing with uh the guy from Duck Dynasty. I don't know his name either, but he was a football player at Louisiana Tech, so I guess that's a little bit of a tie-in. You really think this guy from Duck Dynasty is going to be this beacon of understanding? Oh, my goodness. He doesn't really believe in homosexuality either. Oh, he should be fired. Oh, come on. Give me a break. But you can shit on the redheads all you want. The goddamn genetic mutation. Fuck you. (laughs) You can say whatever you want. We can't do nothing about it. When everyone knows being gay is a choice. I'm just kidding. Not a choice. I don't want to get involved in that. I don't want my six listeners to get offended on that. No, no, no. I don't believe it's a choice and all that. I'm just freaking running my mouth. I'm fooling around. Easy. Uh, Moving on. But Aaron Rodgers is not gay. And he played well today, but not well enough. And everybody who talks, people love to throw out that Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL. Don't know. Five and four in the playoffs. I tell you what Aaron Rodgers does, though, that's better than Peyton or Tom is he can run. He can throw on the run, which makes for a dangerous quarterback, no doubt. And you see it. And any a running quarterback is by far in that way the most difficult thing in defense, especially in the NFL, where I don't give a fuck what they say about how well the NFL guys are coaches. They take a lot of chances in defense. They play a lot of unsound defense. They make some bad moves. Like today, uh, coming off the corner on a blitz, Forget who it was in the Packers. Corner blitz or, or slot blitz, nickel fire, whatever it was. Guy comes inside and lets Kaepernick a couple times. He came inside. They try to come inside, which is a thing. We don't, we, you know, we talk about in high school all the time. You can't come inside. You can't come inside. Sure enough, Kaepernick gets outside. And the biggest plays in that game were made by Kaepernick's feet. You know, good for Colin Kaepernick. And it was kind of funny. It was an interesting thing. People love to throw it out on the Twitter sphere. It's funny. Oh, the Colg team, you know. But Kaepernick was born and I think he was raised for a, you know, a number of years in Wisconsin. And Aaron Rodgers was raised in Northern California. So it kind of flip-flopped there. Kind of a bizarre world. But fucking cold is cold. But those guys stay warm. They run around. As soon as you get you know, that cold weather, it's not like they're a fan sitting up there drinking beer. They're running around. And it's, I've been playing a lot of cold games. And I was just in minus two degree weather and you go outside and you got enough layers on and you get moving you start sweating real soon so that shit's overrated sell that to the freaking sell that to someone else sell that to aaron andrews i'm not buying it but do i really want to talk about that san fran game no more i, don't, I tell you what though san fran is the scariest team out there right now no doubt about that not in my mind anyway play great defense run the ball kaepernick is dangerous can run how about has a plan uh, and I got some San Fran friends who are just some noxious fans. Again, coming from a Patriot fan and my uh, fan base, that's pot con Z kettle black. But uh, other notes, Javon Bulcher, the guy who shot him, his girlfriend and shot himself. Mom suing the Chiefs, suing the NFL, saying they didn't do enough, that he was suffering from CTE. <laughs> that's a can of worms opening up, my friends. If they find, if somebody finds. The Chiefs and the NFL liable for that? It's over. The whole thing's going to come down. They'll be playing games like Fight Club and freaking... They'll be playing games in secret. Do not talk about the NFL. Because this is... It, anybody. And I tell you, I'm still waiting on Aaron Hernandez to pull that card out. But any freaking clown that does anything from here on in, any type of murder or any type of... What have you, what have you, oh... I played Pop Warner football. I, I played semi-pro football. I have concussion problems. My brain's not right. Uh, I can understand how a mom would be a little bit upset, but I don't know. I hope he doesn't win that case. Speaking of brains going south, the juice, O.J. Simpson. Suppose he's claiming he has a brain tumor now, and he's looking for a presidential pardon. Well, that'll go over real well, huh? All the Obama fans out there, if, if Obama goes ahead, go, goes ahead and releases, gives O.J. Simpson a pardon, 
<laughs> oh, that'll go over like a Led Zeppelin. Oh, the juice. The juice. I can't believe he doesn't pull that out now, too. Oh, he had multiple concussions. That's what made him go over the top. I hope on his deathbed, though, if he's on it, I hope he comes clean and what the fuck happened that night. Really, just come clean, OJ. You know, and be like, what? What do I have to lose? I'm bringing on my deathbed here. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Supposedly, he told someone that one night in a drunken stupor. He told someone that he killed her, but just come clean. Aaron Henderson, Aaron, E-R-I-N, a boy named Sue. Guy had linebacker for the Vikings, two DUIs in six weeks. Jesus Christ, she should be locked up. You know, so say, hey, I got CTE. That's why I drink so much. That's why I drive around like that. You know, built in, built in excuse. Oh, all these injuries. Billy Belichick blaming the injuries on shortened practices and how they don't practice enough in the NFL. And they're not prepared enough, so they're in bad football positions. Sell that shit to someone else, Bill. Fuck all that noise. Those dudes are pro athletes. They know what's up. They play. They go out and play. They're used to the speed. And it's not even true either. Because the NFL guy came out and said, they, they, you know, injuries, it's negligible. And it might have something to do with how big and fast these guys are, and they're getting bigger and faster. But typical coach speak, and everybody in New England – and all my friends and listen to EEI and Sports Hub and all that shit and goggle off the Belichick, Belichick cock. Loved, oh, he's right, he's right. Oh, what is he, you know. Oh, Billy Belichick knows it all. He knows it all because he got the best quarterback in football. I digress. I, you know, hey, Belichick's a good coach. I don't think he's freaking a genius that everybody claims that he is. I don't know. I don't buy it. I think they do a lot of good things. I think they saw I think it's stability at the top of the franchise. Even though I have my issues with Bob Kraft as well. Got into an argument with a buddy of mine because Bobby Kraft is strutting around some 30-year-old girlfriend. He's like, oh, he could have a relationship with anyone he wants. True, but you won't be singing the same song when, when he croaks and she tux, takes over the franchise and moves him to Rhode Island. Like Georgia Frontier did with the Rams. Carol Rosenblum. Fire... She married Carol Rosenblum, got the team within like two months, fired his son, moved him out to St. Louis. See what happens then, slush. He can have a relationship with anyone he wants, even though Myra was the one who got him all the money. What else? Before I got to go, these things sneak up on me. What's about this Pro Bowl draft? They think they're going to generate interest with this Pro Bowl draft. Deion Sanders and Jerry Rice drafting on January 26th, and they're going to play the game January 29th. Oh, there's, there's your practice time right there, Bill. Yeah, they're going to have two days to practice. Uh, yeah, and then they're going to go out and, I mean, I get, granted, the Pro Bowl has become a joke, but they're still going to go, go out there and execute. You know why? Because they're really good players. That's why. Oh, the speed. The speed. I, I'm not used to it. Uh, they almost had three blackouts in these playoff games people weren't buying tickets to the games and they had to have what some Kroger I think Kroger supermarket went out and bought like a thousand tickets for Cincinnati now check me if I'm wrong but in a free market and I'm not really a free marketeer but I do believe in capitalism but in a free market if nobody's buying these tickets wouldn't that call for the ticket prices to actually go down you know I mean saying no no god no it's freaking Gestapo-like freaking tactics and the communism. No, no, no. Got to keep those ticket prices up. It's like I was looking to buy a ticket to the national championship game tomorrow night on StubHub. You know how much it was? 900 bucks to buy one fucking ticket. First of all, how many clowns like me are going to actually go to this game by themselves? Because I live right down the street from the, well, not down the street, 20 minutes from the Rose Bowl, half hour. 900 bucks to buy a single seat to go to the Rose Bowl? And they want to talk about how much of a recession we're in. Yeah. All right. Sell it to someone else. 900 bucks. Talk about the national championship real quick. Two teams I really like to style. I really liked. I love Auburn. I think Gus Malzahn is the best coach in the country. He may be the best coach in football. I just got his book not too long ago when she wrote when he was a high school coach about no huddle. Great stuff. Love what they do in the misdirection, misdirection run game, the quarterback run game. I love how they sequence their plays. How if this isn't if this doesn't hit, this will hit. 
which I think is the key to play calling. You don't see it, especially at the pro level. Seems like they just draw shit out of a freak. Oh, let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try that. I think Gus Malzahn has a legitimate plan and follows the sequence. Versus Florida State, that plays tremendous defense, does a lot in the zone run game. And I like zone running football, too, when you make a commitment to it in the play action as well. Think Florida State has too much talent? I don't think it's going to be the blowout everybody says it thinks it's going to be. I do see Florida State run away with it. At the end, I see 34 Florida State, Auburn 21. What the fuck do I know, though? I also picked Atlanta to go to the Super Bowl this year. So, but I think it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be a close game all the way through. I think uh, I think it's going to be 27-21. I think Florida State's going to put one on at the end of the game to seem as though they're running away with it. Oh, shit. Quick. <laughs> Nine minutes before you know it. All the all the uh, head coaching vacancies, two were filled. Billy O'Brien, I talked about that at length. Going to Houston, I think it's a great hire. I think Houston's going to be really good. They got a lot of good pieces. I think there was an abnormality this year, very similar to Kansas City last year. I think they have pieces in place. I don't know if they're going. I don't think they're going to take a quarterback number one. If I if they did, I would take Teddy Bridgewater. I think Teddy Bridgewater is a winner. Don't think he can go run out Johnny Football either. And again, I talked about it earlier. Anybody who thinks Johnny Football is not going to be good is a fool. He may get hurt, but he's too talented not to be good in the NFL. Tampa Bay went out and hired Lovey Smith. Solid pay, solid hiring. Is Lovey Smith going to go out and win the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay? And Mike Glennon? Probably not. Will it be a feel-good story next year? Sure, because I think they were all right this year. I think the problem was they couldn't have a quarterback. I mean, look at these teams that lost their head coaches. Houston, Tampa Bay, Washington, Tennessee, Detroit, Minnesota, Cleveland. The only one with any quarterback's ability there was Detroit. And I've talked about Matt Stafford at length. I completely disagree with Senor Terry Bradshaw about how Matt Stafford, he thinks, is the best quarterback in the league. He throws too many picks. I think Schwartz... Just wasn't the man. I don't think he's the man. I think if someone gets that right person gets in that Detroit team, I think they're going to turn around next year as well. I think they had a little bit of bad luck. Minnesota, no, you know, nothing there. Cleveland, well, I shouldn't say nothing there. I mean, quarterback wise, I, I, I again, if they get a good, good quarterback, they could be fine. Cleveland, they keep talking about Josh McDaniels. I don't know. Everybody seems to shit on Josh McDaniels on the Patriots. They've had success with Brady, no doubt. Again, with the caveat, with Brady, I don't think Cleveland's a team. You know, hey, I like James Franklin. I don't know if he's going to be the Rooney Rule guy. I think there's a guy that, right there that could help one of these teams go out and win. But all these teams I talked about, problems at the quarterback position. I think Washington's a good job as well. I think Snyder gets actually a little bit of bad rep. I think, I think Snyder pretty much gave... Mike Shanahan, the keys to the castle, and Shanahan freaking shoved him up his son Kyle Shanahan's ass. Bad move, nepotism. They don't even let it happen in other forms. All right, let me dive in the trip bag before I freaking lose my way. Three questions. One, at Jay Molama. Oh, excuse me, Jim Loma. Who do you think is more likely to, be, to ever be back in the NFL again, John Gruden or Tim Tebow? Great question. Uh, I think somebody takes a flyer on Tebow next year. I think they at least bring him back, bring him into camp. I think he might make a roster next year, especially if McDaniel is the head coach of some someone. Because like you know, you got a whole year head start. If Gruden doesn't take a job this year, you got a whole year head start. You know what I mean? A lot happens in a year, in the course of an NFL season. Look at this one. So to answer your question, I think Tebow. I think someone might take a flyer on Tebow. I think they should take a flyer on Tebow. But that's the answer to your question. Second one, at Cyrus T. Virus, which do you think was Bill Belichick's better year, 2008, when they lost Brady and went with Matt Castle, or this year when they lost everybody else? Fair question. The 2008 team, I've talked about it before. Of course, in the 2018, they had a tremendous defense. They still had some Hall of Famers on defense at that point. Matt Castle, I think, is a solid middling quarterback, middle of the road type quarterback. I think he played all right when he actually got a chance to play. He's had some health issues. And they were 11 and 5, but they didn't make the playoffs. And they had the weakest schedule in the NFL per football outsiders or whoever fucking talks about what the weakest schedule in the NFL is. So I would have to say this year because they're 12 and 4. 
But they still got fucking, ah, they still got weapons, man. Still got a good old line. Still got several really good running backs. Still got one of the top three, if not the greatest quarterback of all time. Putting it on the five foot nine white boy receivers. Uh, I guess I'll say this, yeah. Begrudgingly. I've said enough on the Belichick era, but begrudgingly, I'll, I will say this year. Last question at Grange, oh, excuse me, at Grunge Banjo. Can't even read my own freaking writing. I got all these notes written down on 99 napkins and shit like that because I didn't have any note. I didn't have my notebook when I was home and I was, yeah, I was, uh, Grunge Banjo. Who are you most surprised about the coaches who didn't lose their jobs this year? Who are you most surprised about the coach? What, what, okay, so which coach I think could should have been fired or could have been fired? It's a great question. Well, first of all, you got 12 teams in the playoffs. Okay, so those guys are going to be saved, at least for the time being, and for the most part, they're going to be saved. Then you'll lo- you what? Seven head coaches vacancies. So that's 19. So you got what? Uh, math, what? 13, 13 coaches that didn't get fired? And some of those guys are grandfathered in. Tom Coughlin, grandfathered in. Jeff Fisher has made some progress. I don't know, was that Leaf? Sexy Rexy, who I, you know, I, look, I like Rex Ryan. I've said it before as much as I don't like the Jets. I think he's a really good football coach, especially if you saw when they announced, when Woody Johnson announced that Rex Ryan will be back, his freaking players went nuts. That, that holds a lot of weight. The players love Rex. Okay, so Rex gets a free pass. Jason Garrett, as much as that's been a shit show in, in Dallas, Jerry Jones has put a lot of time and effort into J- Jason Garrett. Evidently, he's been grooming Jason Garrett to be the next head coach of the Cowboys since Jason Car- Garrett was a was a, a player. A fellow redhead who gets shit on because he's redheaded. So, you know, Jason Garrett. Uh, I gotta say Joe Philbin. I'm surprised Joe Philbin made it through. And I just read tonight. That they're saying Jeff Island's going to make it through this, too. They think Jeff Island's going to make it through. I'm surprised. I thought one of them had to go because when this shit happens on your watch, it's amazing. It, was the whole, it takes, what, seven, eight weeks to be able to actually figure out what the hell happened with Richie Incognito and they're still sitting on it. But I thought Philbin would be gone. Mike Smith, you know, if, I don't know. I, I, I like what Atlanta's doing, stability at the top. Keep the same guy in. So they another team that could be easily be right there next year. They easily could win 12 games. Julio Jones comes back healthy. Matty Ice, Matt Ryan. You know, they were the number one team passing this year. They're the number one, I forget what the number was, but they were the number one passing team this year. Which just goes to show you, once again, something I've been saying forever. If you've been listening, people. Fucking throwing the ball is not the answer all the time. You get yourself in bad situations when you throw the ball. The most effective passes are play-action passes. And I am so nauseated by these people who just throw the out route to the number two receiver with no in-cut, no fake in-cut, little China route back outside. I'm fine with that. Just a straight out route by a number two receiver. It gets picked all the time by a nickel or an athletic linebacker. It's nauseating the play call and play design in the NFL. How many times are you going to see a fucking play action on third and 15? Ugh. And people will tell you, oh, it's part of the protection. It's a waste of time to play action on third and 15. Nobody's biting on it. Nobody, but you see it so many times. Or the play at the end of the half. Or a play at the end of the game. People look for this stuff. Watch it. They just throw a bomb to one guy. Or they say, everybody go go long. I'm going to throw it out. The play design, the fuck, don't buy it that these are the best play callers in the nation. Guys like Gus Melzahn who are hiding in the high school level. And I'm not saying this because I'm a high school coach, but I've seen it. Guys like Gus Melzahn who are proven it. And are true innovators and true play callers and really know what to talk about. Those are guys that really come up. At Bryles. At Baylor. Fight their way through the chainsaw bracket. These guys you see calling plays at the NFL level. Uh, nepotism. They get a sponsor where they're freaking 22 years old. And then all of a sudden they're annoyed. And even Billy Belichick's old man was a longtime coach. 
granted at you know college level, but oh, you know you know what you're doing. You're 22 years old. You're gonna you're fast tracked. Makes me ill. Open your eyes, people. They rather talk about the other shit than actually talk about the shit that matters. I'm done. Yeah, where's the 2014 season? We are upon us. Follow us at Twitter at Hard Yards LA. I will see you next week. Fuck with other niggas.